Hello and welcome to this comprehension exercise, which is called Someone Sent a Chimpanzee to Gerald Durrell, asking him to escort her to England. So let's read this together. So a small van drew up outside the camp one morning, and in the back of it was an enormous wooden crate. It was big enough, I thought, to house an elephant. I wondered what on earth could be inside. And when the driver told me that it contained the chimpanzee, Colomondelli, that I would be escorting to England, I remembered thinking how silly his owner was to send such a small chimpanzee in such a huge crate. I opened the door and looked inside and there sat Colomondelli. Just one glance at him and I realised my mistake. I would not be taking charge of a baby chimpanzee, but a fully grown one about eight or nine years old. Sitting hunched up in the dark crate, he looked as though he was about twice as big as I, and from the expression on his face, I gathered that the trip had not been to his liking. Before I could shut the door, the box, however, Clomondelli had extended a long hairy arm, clasped my hand in his and shaken it warmly. Then he turned round and gathered up a great length of chain, one end of which was fastened to a collar around the neck, draped it carefully over his arm and stepped down out of the box. He stood there for a moment and after surveying me carefully examined the camp with great interest, whereupon he held out his hand, looking at me inquiringly. I took it in mine and we walked into the marquee together. Colomandelli went and seated himself on one of the chairs by the camp table, dropped his chain on the floor and sat back and crossed his legs. He gazed round the tent for a few minutes, then looked at me inquiringly again. Obviously, he wanted me to offer him something after his tiring journey. I'd been told before he arrived that he liked to drink tea and so I called out to the cook and took him to make a pot of tea. Then I went out and had a look at Clomondelli's crate and in the bottom I found an enormous and very battered tin mug. When I returned to the tent with this, Clomondelli was quite overjoyed and praised me for my cleverness in finding it by uttering a few cheerful hoo-hoo noises. While we were waiting for the tea to arrive, I sat down opposite Clomondelli and lit a cigarette. To my surprise, he became very excited and held out his hand across the table to me, wondering what he would do. I handed him the cigarette packet. He opened it, took out a cigarette and put it between his lips. He then reached out his hand again and I gave him the matches. So to my astonishment, he took out one out of the box, struck it, lit his cigarette and threw the box down on the table. And lying back in his chair, he blew out clouds of smoke in the most professional manner. No one had told me that Clomondelli smoked. I wondered rather anxiously the other undesirable habits he might have, which his master had not warned me about. Let's read the last paragraph now. Just at that moment, the tea was brought in and Clomondelli greeted its appearance with loud hoots of joy. He watched me carefully while I half filled his mug with milk and then added the tea. I had been told that he had a very sweet tooth, so I put in six large spoons of sugar, an action that he greeted with grunts of satisfaction. He placed his cigarette on the table and seized the mug with both hands. Then he stuck out his lower lip very carefully and dipped it into the tea to make sure it was not too hot. As it was a little warm, he sat there blowing on it vigorously until it was cool enough and then he drank it all down without stopping once. When he had drained the last drops, he peered into the mug and scooped out all the sugar he could with his forefinger. After that, he tipped the mug up on his nose and sat with it like that for about five minutes until the very last of the sugar had trickled down into his mouth. For a few minutes, he was in a world of his own, far away from the threat of civilized man. What an interesting chimpanzee with some undesirable habits. So this is a comprehension exercise. Please do read it one more time 
and you've got some questions to answer based on this particular exercise. Good luck with this, and we will follow this as usual in our next lesson. Thank you.